Whichever way you, you choose to call it is a noun anyway. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Amblyopia, amblyopia. Okay. It's, it's fine. All right. Yeah. Great. So um, maybe we should wrap up on that and then we can move on to have the conversations about um, childhood eye care issues. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Great. So. Um, the, you know, when we were wrapping up, you were saying something specifically. Can you please rehash on that? Okay, yes. Um, so I was talking about amblyopia, which in, in simple terms is lazy eye. Mm. And um, what, what that means is that, you know, the child over time develops um, a weak eye. Mm -hmm. Weak in the sense that, um, you know, depending on whatever stimulus the child has been exposed to, the brain prefers to pick signals from the stronger eye and then ignores the weaker one. Right. So the one that is weak, if it's not given the brain, you know, clear signals, it, it, it eventually that the brain will learn that, okay, this eye is not functional. So right. let me ignore it and then stick with the one that is functional. Okay. Okay, so in this yeah. case, if there's a parent whose child has this, or maybe the parent can see signs of this, what do they do? Okay, so the 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 main thing you the parents or the caregiver would have to do is is to take the child to see the optometrist. Okay, there are certain signs we look out for when you bring in the child for the examination. Okay, uh, the first will be that we look out for a white spot in the eye. If there is a white spot that's present in the eye, what this means is that the child probably has what we call congenital cataract. Right, cataract that um, adults, you know, would develop, mm. it can happen with children as well. Now, um, this congenital cataract will happen because um, sometimes during vaginal birth, depending on how well the child's head or the area around the eyes was handled, it can cause some level of trauma that will, you know, cause the cataracts to form. Now, when the cataracts form, because the form right in the anterior part of the eye, it blocks light from going into the eye to allow the child to see. So when this goes unnoticed and it, nothing is done about it, eventually it causes that eye also to become weak because it's not forming any signals for the brain to interpret. So, uh, you know, when you bring the child in, we look out for that. We also would look out for... Um, I pen, what's in our local, you know, uh, nicknames will say alukumi. Um, what what children, did you say that is called again? Some people call it alukumi. alukumi. Yeah, but what is the proper name for it? It's, it um, technically, it's called strabismus. Okay. Or it's just a misaligned eye. The eye is right. misaligned. Okay. Yes. Okay. So when you have a child who has this alukumi or misaligned eyes, mm. um, you may want to be worried about that and bring the child in. Okay. What this happens is, you know, everybody, when you're looking straight ahead, both of your eyes should be focused 
you know, the same way, looking straight ahead. Mm. But when you you realize that your child, when uh, the child is focusing straight ahead, one eye is either turned inwards or outwards, then we say that the child has strabismus or misaligned eyes or right. the alicomy. Right. Yes. Very so interesting. When, and and can yes, that so, be corrected? So when when we when we realize that or when the parent realizes this and brings the child in, we have visual therapy. We take the the person through. A lot of the time, the outcomes are successful. Okay. In very severe forms, surgery would have to be done by the ophthalmologist. Also, okay. the outcomes for the corrective surgery usually are very positive. Okay. Oh. Although mm. it is common that, you know, children zero to six months old, every now and then you may um, notice some intermittent misalignment in their eyes. That, a lot of the times, is quite normal. So okay. parents shouldn't be too alarmed when the child is pretty young, you know, below six months old. Mm. It's quite common to see an intermittent misalignment in the eyes. But where it's consistent, then there's a cause for worry because, you know, uh, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be consistent. It has to be intermittent. You know, it comes right. and goes, comes and goes. Mm. Uh -huh. Now, the coming and going is because the child zero to six years, their ocular muscles are still forming. The muscles are not strong enough mm. to control the movement of the eyeball when they want to look up, down, left, or right. As they get older, the muscles become stronger, and then it can fully control the movement of the eyes. Where the misalignment is consistent, the eye is constantly turned in, constantly turned out, right. constantly turned up or constantly turned down, then we have a problem. It could be a problem with the muscle or it could be a problem with the um, uh, cataracts or whatever. So, so when they come in, they will get help for that. Yes. So when they come in, we look out for that, and then we we you know put the child through therapy if that's required, or if it's surgery that's required, we do that as well. Okay. You know we yeah we refer to the ophthalmologist to handle that. Okay. All right. So yeah. that has nothing really to do with um, whether or not your parents have the same thing. I I always wanted to believe that for people who were cross-eyed. It was, you know, maybe one parent has it, but but obviously that's wrong. Okay, so in some in some um, cases, we've had, you know, cases where it's actually a genetic thing. Probably somebody okay. in the family did have it, and it's running a course. Right. So yes, oftentimes if if it's in the family, yes, it's possible that the child can be born with with it. Okay. All right. So let's talk about some of the other common um, eye care issues that children would normally go through. Okay. Um, one other one that I would like to take mention of, of is uh, what we call retinoblastoma, which is childhood eye cancer. Okay. Yes. This is also typically picked up from the eye clinic when the child is born or in the first few months of their life. Now, this particular one is life-threatening. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not picked up early enough for treatment to commence, a lot of the time the child will lose their life along the line. Wow. Because obviously it's a cancer, which mm -hmm. grows really quickly, yes. And so it's, it's one thing that, um, you know, we, we consider to be a serious situation. So... Again, when you bring in the child, there's, you know, one or two tests that we conduct to ascertain quickly if there's anything like that. So a lot of the time we want to take the red reflex of the child. So we shine a, a, um, a torch or a bright light into the child's eye. And then we, we're supposed to have a red reflex, you know. But if, if it's giving off a white reflex, then we have a cause for concern. Okay. So then we'll run subsequent tests you know, to rule it out or to properly diagnose if there's retinoblastoma or not. Okay. And and what are some of the signs that a parent would see? 
typically for retinoblastoma, um, you know, if, if it's a younger child, obviously the, the child cannot tell you I, I'm having pain or I'm having this or I'm having that. A lot of the time it also would go unnoticed until the cancer has progressed. Mm. That makes it that makes it a challenging one. It it typically will go unnoticed, and so, which is why we always would recommend parents to bring in their child in the very first months of their life, zero to six months. After the six months, the, the next time the child will probably be assessed will be in three years, and then after that, one year after that, like an annual eye examination. It's always to it's always a good idea to have the child come in early so that it is picked up because left to the parents alone, obviously they wouldn't know what to look out for. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Right. So when you bring the child in, then we can pick it up, and then what needs to be done for the child, we do that. Okay, and and I like yeah. the fact that um, Lotus Opticals is um, given free examination to children uh, zero to twelve. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, so that for any parent who may have seen signs or just wants to do, you know, a regular checkup because it's important that you do it, um, I think that maybe you should you should um, be the one to tell them what it is that um, or why it's necessary for them to bring their children, and also the times and 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 the places that they can come because I know you have um, your East Legon branch and you have your Sakumono branch as well. Yes, we do. Okay. So, um, yes, um, a, a lot of parents, you know, typically would want to believe that their children have the best of vision. I mean, that's every parent's dream, mm-hmm. that your child will not have any form of abnormality in quotes. But bring the child in, and then that is where we're picking up all the other things that will come up. It It could even be that the child has a very high level of uncorrected refractive error where the child is extremely nearsighted or the child is extremely farsighted. Okay. So, yes. So when you bring them into either our Sakumano office or our Isligon office, you know, we take them through all the necessary tests and whatever recommendations that are there, we make it known to the parents and then they can take it up from there. All right, Dr. Sylvia, thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate your support when it comes to our children. However, we will have to continue this series on children and eye care. It's very important that we cover all the basics when it comes to child eye health or our children's eye care. It's very important. But in the meantime, Lotus Opticals is located in East Legon and in Sakumono. In East Legon, where exactly are you? In East Legon, we are on the Nisai Road, Nisai Road, and you can also find us on Google Maps. Okay. You just type in Lotus Optical East Legon, and it brings you straight to our office. Okay. And then in Sakumono? In Sakumono, we are on the Vulcanizer Junction. That's on the Sakumono Village Road. Okay. So you can call us. Uh, you can call us on zero five zero six six five. Two seven five four or the East Legon office zero five three one seven three six nine three three. We're open Monday to Saturday. All right, thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Sylvia. You're we welcome, really appreciate. Yeah. Okay, so there you have it, Dr. Sylvia Boama. She is an optometrist at Lotus Opticals, and this morning she has given us some education when it comes to our children and how important it is that we pay attention to their eyes. What's happening at the moment is that Lotus Opticals is given free eye medication, eye examination to your children from 0 to 12 years. So all you have to do is to find their location in East Legon and in Sakumono and take your child along with you to get tested uh, just to make sure that you're safe and your child is also okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Sylvia. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Natalia. You too. Okay. All right, so that's it for Doctor's Note. It is 11 o'clock. I'm handing over to...